All right, so welcome back to the civil FE exam review. In this video, we're going to be wrapping up materials, which is section uh, seven in the civil FE exam review handbook. Um, and we're going to be looking at physical and mechanical properties of metals. So I have a few practice problems for you today that I want to dive right into. All right, so. This one says, what is a key characteristic of steel that makes it suitable for applications subjected to dynamic loading and impact forces? Okay. So we're looking at steel. High compressive strength, BA. So the given information, we know that we're talking about steel here and um, uh, find the reason for dynamic loading. Okay. Are there any formulas? No. Okay. So from this, this is kind of like prior knowledge. Um, A, would it be high compressive strength? In this case, no. So when you think of high compressive strength, normally you think of uh, concrete, that type of, that type of thing. Um, low density, I don't see how that helps us with dynamic loading and impact forces, high toughness. Uh, yes, I mean, you need something to be, you need your steel to be pretty tough, especially when loading can happen or high impact instances can happen. Um, if you think about like a, a bridge, right? Now you may not have, let's see if I can make this bridge look good. Oh, that was close. Okay, so say you have a car coming on it, right? At full speed. So. like a little shoe or some roller skates. If you have this type of impact, you need something that's tough for it not to collapse or fracture um, at the given moment. And so like when it, when you have the car, you know, going across the bridge, you don't need the bridge to fracture right then and there. Right? So this is why steel, Steel has, um, I don't know if you know that st stress strain curve, but basically it has a, a good amount. It can handle a lot of stress, and a lot of strain. And after it absorbs all of that stress and strain, as long as it doesn't, you know, reach its yield point, then it goes right back to its original state. Now, for other materials, there are sometimes fractures or like with wood, right? If you had a, a wood bridge, you may need way more material uh, to be able to get the same results as a um, tough piece of steel or thin piece of steel, all right? So, um, and if that, car drives over that wood frame, it could crack or it could, you know, rupture faster. So you need something that's super tough and that's why steel is able to, to benefit there. And then high thermal conductivity, it's not a lot of heat and 
um i don't think steel i mean if you put steel under really high heat i don't i don't know if it does that well probably melts so i don't know if you want to it's known for that and it, and i don't think that is going to help with dynamic loading and impact so answer is c all right let's look at number two so why is specific gravity an important parameter in aggregates for concrete mix design all right so this one isn't really a this is one that you would need prior knowledge on so specific gravity parameter in aggregates for concrete mix design so it indicates the color of the aggregates no let's look at see if anything comes up for a specific gravity So what is specific gravity, right? Well, specific gravity is the specific weight of something over the, so just say SG is equal to like in concrete mix design is the And I'm just pulling this information from fluid mechanics, but basically it is the um, specific weight and in this case it would be like concrete over the specific weight of water. So does this indicate the color of aggregates? No. That's why logically some of this stuff just doesn't make sense. It affects the sound absorption properties of concrete. No. Sound? No. Absorption properties of concrete. Okay. It influences the proportioning of aggregates in the mix design. Yes. So you got, um, you know, your specific weight or amount of aggregate to water, right? In this uh, concrete mix. So, and it determines the fineness modulus of aggregates so is it determining how fine the fineness modulus no no and even if it did i would say the better answer is still c because <laughs> I, I technically don't know what the fineness modulus is but for concrete mix um you're looking at specific weight and you're not determining like how fine or not fine something is to to get your specific gravity of the mix all right let's look at number three Okay, so which metal has the highest melting point? Okay. So um, this would literally be like taking a guess. So we're given, what information are we given? Well, our answer choices. All right, which is aluminum, cerium, uh, cobalt, silver, 
and we have to find the one with the highest melting point. Maybe you all know what the highest melting point of these are, but this is something that I don't believe you would have to remember. So I would just search. All right, properties of metals. We're in the materials section. So I think we, that was the only one. So hopefully we have all the materials that we need. Okay, so when we look at aluminum, it's six, its melting point is 660 degrees Celsius. Okay. What about, I'll zoom in so you guys can see a bit better. All right, so we got 660. That's where I'm pulling that number from. Doesn't matter if you use Celsius or degrees, they're the same as far as choosing which one's the highest. Okay. So I'm just going to go with, but you, well, it does matter. It, it, if you're going to use Celsius, use Celsius for all of them as you're comparing, or if you're using Fahrenheit, just use Fahrenheit for all. So Celsius looks easier right now for me. So I'm going to use Celsius. So cerium coming over its melting point is 800 degrees Celsius. I'm just gonna note. Okay, what about cobalt? Whoa, 1,494 degrees Celsius. All right, and then what about silver? 961. So 961. All right, so it looks like cobalt is our winner. So answer C with 1,494 degrees Celsius. So they can ask you various things about metals. Um, think about like they might ask the specific heat of a different metal or what's the heat conductivity. Um, properties of metals is a good way to kind of get you thinking, get you using some charts. So it's important to be at to be able to identify what they're asking, um, and using your handbook for whatever information that they want you to pull. So, all right, so this concludes, I believe the material section. Um, in the next section, we will be looking at fluid mechanics. See if my memory is there. See if I get, I got this right. I believe I did. Yep, so fluid mechanics will be the next section that we go over. So you, you're over halfway through and uh, all you have to do is keep going, keep studying, keep learning, and keep practicing. All right, I'll see you in the next video.